again, welcome to Birmingham, and I think after last week the weather report straight away. I'm delighted to say that conditions are a whole lot better. It's still a little bit blustery, but nothing uh, like the tail end of Hurricane Charlie, which literally blew away the Super Prix, and if you were with us in Cardiff, you'll recall caused us all sorts of problems, but no matter, uh, we're dry again, and we survived. Well, tonight it's a tough, bustling circuit, uh, which down the years has provided us with, uh, well, really some spectacular action. Remember 1983 here, when the Australian, Phil Anderson, ended up lapping the field. So now it is a real possibility that Phil Anderson is going to do what everybody thought was impossible and catch the field. And he's waving his hands, he's calling it, I'm on, and look at that, what a professional. He throws his arms in the, in the air, Phil Anderson joins the back of the field, and he is one lap ahead. It's uh, not always as easy as that, though. Even the great Sean Kelly has been a victim here, ending up a little bit nearer to the tarmac than he would have liked. It can be dangerous. Not surprising, really, because there are one or two hairy sections, not least of all this right-angle bend at the bottom of New Street. Now, how would you fancy negotiating that at full throttle? And if they do it right, well, Temple Street Hill is waiting to sort out the men from the boys, and no doubting which category Paul Sherwin belongs to. Paul, this must be the toughest part of the circuit, I guess. Well, it's the toughest and one of the most dangerous, actually, because we come down this descent here after the finish line, shoot into this corner, and a uh, bit of a surprise for the riders, because when we get around the corner, there are all these green bollards, which is the, uh, the motorbike lane. Um, a lot Can't of riders too wide, then, obviously. Well, no, a lot of riders... Uh, have a bit of a, a bit of a scare when they come around here and this is where the brakes can go because uh, if somebody takes a bad line and brakes uh, just behind you you can get get four or five lengths clear and then over the top if uh, if you're uh, if you're still clear then it's uh, away to the finish all right well let's have a closer look at the course shall we birmingham is the shortest of the city center circuits it's only 750 meters but it's very fast and as we've heard already it's quite likely to produce fireworks the riders begin in front of the council house and immediately as they go past the town hall it's a very sharp left-hander there down the hill into new street which is the main shopping thoroughfare of birmingham they'll be traveling at about 40 miles an hour down the straight there before breaking hard for this dangerous 90 degree left-hander into Temple Street, which is a long, steep hill, where there's quite likely to be a break if there's going to be one, watch out for that. At the top of Temple Street, it's a little chicane there, a flip to the left, then to the right, and then they turn left again through Temple Row West, down to Colmore Row, the finishing straight, back down to the council house and the start-finish line. It's a fascinating prospect, and they're itching to go here. Uh, but before we go any further, I think congratulations very much in order to Tony Doyle, who late last night won the 5,000 meters individual pursuit title at the World Championships in Colorado. After twice finishing behind the Dutchman Hans Henrik Oosten over the past couple of years, Tony at last turned the tables, and this is how, just a few hours ago, Tony Doyle ended up winning gold for Britain. And just three laps remaining of the track now, Tony Doyle on the left in blue is chasing now hands in the first step of Denmark. There's that almost two seconds ahead. Now his lead is down to three tenths of a second. The bell now, Erstead, the champion for the last two years, Tony Doyle, the silver medalist, is coming back at the Dane. Six tenths the gap. And as Tony Doyle comes to the finish, he's ahead. Look at the time gap now, 1.9 seconds. Tony Doyle, in a brilliant last lap, has reversed the title. Doyle takes gold, and Erstead is in the silver medal position. Well, that was a marvellous win for Tony Doyle, a terrific boost for British cycling, and we'll be seeing him in that rainbow jersey. Those are the colours, of course, of a world champion at Westminster next week. That really is something to look forward to. All right, well, let's uh, get this one underway. A quick check on the leaderboard. Malcolm Elliott, of course, still up there in front. Eight points clear now after his winning Cardiff. But Shane Sutton, who won the series last year, is mounting a challenge. He's based just down the road in Dudley, and he would love to win tonight. Mike Doyle still wears the green uh, King of the Sprints jersey. Elliott's involved in this one as well, but he'll have his sights set a lot higher now, and that will suit Doyle. OK, race six, the penultimate well, race in this yeah, series. Go, go, Let's join go, our commentator, go, 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 Phil Liggett. And, uh, three, Thank you very much, go, Richard. Go, go, and uh, Tony Doyle, of course, go, feeling the effects go, of that gold medal, I'm sure, by celebrating into the early hours of this morning. Magnificent gold medal for Tony. 
and he not here of course this evening but certainly among the starters we have Alan Piper back again who was second at Cardiff and we also have Frank Host and there he is the big Belgian sprinter who had the misfortune to crash at Cardiff. Henny Kuiper on the left of those two riders, the other rider is Joey McLaughlin. The riders now ready to begin 60 laps of the city centre circuit, the sixth event in the seven race championship with Malcolm Elliott wearing that leader's yellow jersey and riding for the ANC Halfords team. And so the whole field winding away here and we've seen some marvellous races in this series. We've also seen it are more than our fair share of rain around the cities of England and Ireland and Wales. And tonight, thankfully, it is a warm evening. Late summer it may be, but one of the most pleasant evenings of these championships. And Paul Sherwin, the British Circuit Race Champion, leading out the field on this opening lap. Some climbs up Temple Street there. Mark Bell, the British Road Race Champion, riding at the head of affairs there, followed by Steve Jockin of the Modusol team. And the yellow jersey of Elliot already paying close attention here to the race. He came into this leader's yellow jersey at Cardiff with a magnificent ride where he won, of course, 20 points when his main rivals failed to score. And that put him up on top of the list. So Mark Bell threatening to do much in this series this year. He was fourth in Cardiff. And round and out of Victoria Square, they've completed the opening lap. 59 to go, and that's a long way around this very, very twisting circuit. And only uh, Australia have ever won on this course. We've had Gary Sutton here, and we've had Phil Anderson, and in other occasions, Alan Piper. And it looks as though the Modusel team have come here with a vengeance tonight. The team manager, John Wilshaw, said they wanted to win this evening. Modusel, little Steve Jockey there, looks over his shoulder to the right just to see who's moving up. Well, it was Ian Fagan from the Project Air squad in the mauve jersey there, being trailed in the blue by Mark Bell. Then Jockey slips back into third place, and it's ominous there. Alan Piper has moved up into fourth place. Well, Malcolm Elliott may have won last week, but what a lead he would have had if his win at Dublin had been allowed to stand. Uh, yes, yes, Dublin. Uh, I still keep thinking back to Dublin and uh, thinking what might have been. But um, after Cardiff last week, uh, I was made up with that. Um, the form at the moment is, is very good. And uh, tonight, I hope to try and consolidate the lead I've got because at the moment he's very desperate the, uh, the, the point situation and due to the structuring of the points for each race um, I could lose the lead tonight by, by only finishing third uh, conceivably Shane Sutton could take it if he won the race but uh, I don't intend letting that happen and so the race comes up this not inconsiderable incline here which you can now see from the top of the climb of Temple Row Ian Fagan still on the front Mark Bell marking well in second place for the rally squad and Alan Piper now staying uh, in fourth place behind little Steve Jockin. He won't get too much shelter behind the man they call the Pocket Rocket, of course. He's only a shade over five feet tall. And there we can see for the first time the long finishing sprint here in the city of Birmingham. A very good finish indeed, slightly downhill and Piper's on the front. Keith Lambert, the oldest rider in the race in second place and tucked in nicely behind him, I think it's Steve Jockey. Fagan back in fourth place now. A lot of riders here are beginning to twitch very early on tonight. And it looks to me as though they are very, very keen to try and steal a victory in this series. Piper, most certainly the man of the race in Cardiff. And now he's on the front again. Well, in many ways, it's a shame that Alan Piper has been unable to ride all of these series because if he had have been, he, I, he would, I'm sure, have been quite a way up and challenging for that yellow jersey. There he goes, the Australian who lives in Belgium. Didn't make the team for the Panasonic squad in the Tour de France this year, but he's ridden that race on two previous occasions and finished both times. Well, Mike Doyle riding the race in the green jersey here has been a very solid leader in the Spitz competition. How does he feel tonight? Well, tonight if it stays dry, I'm very hopeful. Um, because Malcolm